Hi, Rory here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the reverb system that we have in place in Hammer. In order to do so, I'm going to first go to F mod and mute the ambience, weapons, vehicles, vehicle weapons, effects, and all of the dialogue as well. We're also going to go over here to the effect returns and turn up all of my reverbs and delays by 10 dB just to make them extra noticeable for this demonstration. So first of all, here are all of my effects in one group. Starting off with the effect returns that I inherited from the Hammer project. Here is the indoor reverb. So as you go indoors and are covered by a roof, it will trigger a snapshot which starts the indoor reverb process. And here is that plugin. And this reverb is intended to be adaptive to the room size, although it's a bit simplistic. Similarly, if we go underground, like when we do the level in the subway station, then it'll trigger a snapshot which will turn on this reverb, which I can then tweak to sound a bit more cavernous. So what this reverb system that I inherited lacked was any sort of sense of open reverb or space for the many times that Hammer is in the street or running down an alley. Um, we want to have some reverb, but of course not the same as the indoor reverb. So what I have then added is the street reverb, which is an IR here of an empty street. Uh, this is the default reverb as Hammer runs around the city. Sometimes Hammer goes into very open space, in which case we have here an open reverb with a longer, more open ambience IR. And sometimes Hammer goes into very tight little alley spaces, in which case we have over here an alley reverb. And you can see from the impulse response here, this is much more a reverb made of early reflections. Let's first of all go and see how I have set this up in Unity. If we go and have a look at the map here, and if we go into the hierarchy and into the folder called Rory's, we'll see a reverb zones folder. So first of all, looking at the open zones. The largest reverb zone we have here is called all rooftops. And this zone is basically an altitude zone. If Hammer is higher in altitude than say about two stories high, uh, going up to the top skyscrapers, then you will hear the open reverb kick in. If he goes really high, i.e. flying uh, around in planes and helicopters, then you won't hear any reverb at all. So how does this occur? If Hammer is in this zone, there's the trigger enter, there's the player, then it will launch this event, which is called Mixer Open. And if we go back to F mod and go and have a look at Mixer Open, we'll see here a snapshot called Hammer in Open. Uh, this snapshot will be engaged. And if we go and have a look at the snapshot, hammer in open, we can then see that various sounds will go into the open reverb and turn the street reverb down accordingly. You can see it on many different groups there. So that's the basic system of how these reverbs are running. What other open areas are there? We have this very large zone around the stadium pitch, uh, another one around the car park area there, uh, another large one in the west, and finally one over there in the east. Those are the only open zones. Uh, they tend to be all on this kind of north side of the map. As I said, the street zones don't exist because they are the default. So it's only if we are in an open zone or an alley zone that we are not in a street zone. Here, I can show you all of the alley zones. So there are many of them, they're much smaller, and they will trigger uh, a mixer event here called Mixer Alley, which has a very similar snapshot called Hammer in Alley and runs in a very similar way. It's much easier to see all of these zones if we actually go underneath the city. And you can see here that this little group of buildings as alleys running in between, as does this one, as does this one, and larger ones over here. So 16 zones in total account for all of the alleys. 
So let's have a look at how these sounds all work in Unity. We're going to be listening just to the open reverb, street reverb, and alley reverb. I've muted the other reverbs and the adaptive reverb. Also, please don't pay any attention to this non-diegetic delay, it stands for, or non-diegetic reverb. These are entirely in place for the menu and other interface sounds to keep them completely separate from the ambience of Hammer City. So if we have a wander around, what we're hearing out here is the open reverb. You can see a little tail there dying. Whereas if we go back to the street, there we hear the switch to the street reverb, which is the default. And if I run down one of these alleys, there you get the much closer and much tighter alley reverb. Back to the open if we go up here on the roof. But you may notice that there are problems when we say go from an open roof down into an alley takes a little while for the game engine to sort of update. The main problem with this system is a problem that's inherent with convolution reverbs, and that's that they are static recordings of a space. So we're literally going from a static recording of an alley to a static recording of a street. There's no uh, blending in between the two, and of course there's no apparent increase in the early reflections as you open up from the alley into the street. Convolution reverb will always suffer from this problem. So what did I do to overcome this? If we go back to FMOD, we'll see that I have over here an adaptive echo. If we go and have a look at Hammer in the game, we'll have a look at the ray casting system that's happening. And here you can see Hammer with the ray casts coming out of his body to all the buildings around. So this is the system that I set up to add a much more realistic echo system. This is to deal with the early reflections as Hammer moves between the buildings. What we're seeing here is a bunch of raycasts going out. If they hit a wall or a floor or a ceiling, uh, then they turn yellow. And if they turn yellow, they also bring back with them uh, a distance measurement for how long that yellow line is. If they fail to hit, then they simply uh, turn blue and don't get included in the calculation. This may look very complicated, but there's just many raycasts, so as to get a good idea of what's around us. You can see that most of the raycasts are hitting this wall and this wall and the one behind, but some are managing to reach far enough to hit walls that we wouldn't hear reflections of, like all the way off that skyscraper back there. It's not as complex as it looks, because in reality, what's going on is all of these yellow lines are then averaged to simply get an average distance to the surrounding walls. This average distance is then divided by the speed of sound, 344 meters per second, so as to determine the time that it would take sound to travel that distance. Of course, in reality, sound would travel to the wall and back again, so we need to double it as well. So if we go and have a look in FMOD, We'll see that in my mixer, I also have a mixer echo. And we have here echo length. So this is already translated into milliseconds in the code. And we have a minimum of zero and a maximum of 250. This isn't, and a nice linear line of intensity of this snapshot. And if we go and have a look at the snapshot, we'll see that when the snapshot is fully 100% active, i.e. the furthest or longest delay time, then we'll have 320 milliseconds of delay and very quiet, because of course that sound will have traveled a long distance, minus 41 dBs. If instead we are at the absolute minimum echo, then we would only hear a delay time of 10 milliseconds, unfortunately that's the minimum of this plugin, and we'd be hearing that at only 
10 decibels quieter than the original sound. So that's how we get an adaptive echo system. I'm now going to turn off the convolution reverbs, alley, open, and street reverb, so that we can have a wander around in Hammer and hear just how these echoes sound. So there you hear the very subtle slap back echo. If I go into a tighter space, should get very short, longer, and if I jump up onto a building, we're getting a much longer and quieter echo there. Now the advantage of this echo system is of course it is much much more adaptive to small nuances in the differences of the size. So that's reflecting off, say, that wall over there. Whereas I drop down here, it's reflecting off this wall and this wall. And if I go indoors, this system, it doesn't make any difference whether you're indoors or outdoors. You'll notice that it should even be sensitive to whether or not we're in a corner or near a wall. So in FMOD, here is the adaptive echo return. I'm also sending this to an adaptive reverb over here. This isn't really part of the adaptive system, but it's simply that if we just use a delay plugin with a small bit of feedback, it sounds a bit like a delay plugin. If we use a delay plugin and then subsequently send it onto a reverb, then it's much more realistic of how echoes appear in acoustic space, which is that they will always have a, a small reverberant tail. So this reverb is not adapting to the space, it's just adding 300 milliseconds of tail to whatever delay time this plugin is feeding. So if we listen to the two together, we now can add back the convolutions and we should start to get a fairly nice compromise between the two. Remember that this is exaggerated for the purposes of this demo. Open space. Nice big long echo. Nice tight alley. And in here, a really tight little alley system there. So that's how the outdoor reverb system works. Let's go and have a listen to how that works indoors. So here we are approaching the car park. The car park is probably one of the best examples of a real indoor space. So we're gonna go indoors here. It would help if I unmuted it. And now we're hearing a rather exaggerated car park reverb indoors here. So indoors, we do have an adaptive reverb, but it's a little bit more simplistic than what we have for the echoes. Let me just show you. Here is Am Hammer inside the car park. The yellow raycasts that you see are the same ones that you saw before, so you can ignore them. And then the green and the red ones are the ones that operate only if Hammer senses that he is indoors. So a raycast goes directly above his head, and if it hits something, it then sends out these other raycasts. When I inherited this raycast system, it was only sending out eight raycasts in an angle around him. It wasn't sending them up in this fan. So I added a lot more raycasts in order to make the hit ratio, which it, which it is calculating, uh, a bit more accurate. So what's happening with this Raycast system, if the Raycasts hit the wall and they are of different lengths, if it hits a wall they go red, if it doesn't hit a wall they go green. We simply divide the number of uh, successful hits by the total number of Raycasts to get a hit ratio, which then in a very simplistic way determines the size of the room. If we wander around the room you should hear how this reverb adapts. I'm just going to turn off 
by Echoes temporarily. So we're just listening to the indoor reverb at the moment. Nice big open space, but if I go near the window, it becomes a bit less cavernous because of course many of the rays are going out the window and not hitting anything. If on the other hand we go into a corner or near a wall, the reverb will get quite a lot tighter. So this is doing fairly well for the total size of the space, but it's not really doing very well to alter the early reflections that would change as we say run through this corridor. You hear the reverb tail get shorter and then longer again. If I turn back on my adaptive echo system as well, then we're hearing the two together. get a much nicer sense of the close echoes there in the corridor or for that matter in the corner but we get the nice open space now a big problem with this indoor outdoor system is that if you quickly leave a building there you go there's an amount of time that it takes for the system to sort of wake up and realize that you're outside and start the fade out process Unfortunately, I've tried all I can with things like increasing this release tail here uh, or doing it from the event loudness uh, because it should allow a fade out uh, from those parameters. But the way that it's coded into uh, the scripts within Hammer, um, I can't get a nice smooth move between the two. So what I think I've done overall with this reverb system is explored First of all, dealing with the algorithmic uh, reverb system that determines whether you're indoors or not. I realized the limitations that existed with that, and I wanted to add some outdoor reverbs. In order to add outdoor reverbs, I think outdoor reverbs sound a lot better with convolution, because outdoor reverbs are quite uh, unique in the way that they sound. And I then explored the possibilities of having an adaptive convolution system. The adaptive convolution system is not without its flaws, and so I started to look at a much better system that really analyzes the space around Hammer and starts to make calculations accordingly. No one of these systems is perfect in itself. Uh, I feel that I've left all of them in place in order to sort of demonstrate the range of my experiments and then hopefully to discuss this with a game programmer uh, with whom we could then decide which system is worth developing and taking forward uh, to make the best reverb system we can for Hammer. As such, as I have it in place, I have a compromise between these systems and the way they all work together makes for a fairly convincing reverb system. If I turn it back down to a normal level, let's just have a listen. Outdoor reverb. Indoor reverb. Big open reverb. Indoor again. A much tighter alley reverb. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and now understand the reverb system that I have in place in Hammer.